following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Light and consciousness. The five type of souls. Yehida, Haya, Neshama, Ruach, and Nefesh. These are the five type of consciousness or better said uh, cognizance that uh, relate to the cosmos to the seven cosmoses the sephiroth of the tree of life Master Samael on the or stated in uh, one of his books of in uh, astrology light and consciousness are two phenomena of the same thing <coughs> to a lesser degree of consciousness there corresponds a lesser degree of light to a greater degree of consciousness, a greater degree of light. So, consciousness, soul, are synonymous. In this lecture, we are going to study, as a continuation of the Parsufim, the five uh, faces of God, this type these five types of souls or consciousness that we have to be aware of it. With this, of course, we have also to quote Luke chapter 21 and verse 19 when the uh, Master Jesus of Nazareth stated, In your patience, Possess ye your souls. We are going to apply this verse to the five types of souls. Because he all uh, talk in plural. So, we have uh, to possess this five type of souls. Or better said developed its uh, attributes within each one of us. If you remember in the lecture of the Parsufim, we explain in synthesis about the different uh, symbols related with the tree of life, related with the manifestations of God 
And now we are going to go deeper into this uh, topic in order for us to comprehend what the consciousness is in relation with the universe, in relation with creation. As you remember, the first uh, sephirah that emanates from the Ain Sof, from the Astra absolute space, is called Keter. And to him corresponds that uh, first uh, Parsufim, or Parsuf, that we name Arikampin. We explain that this Arikampin, which is Keter, is related to the other two Sephiroth, or the first triangle of the Tree of Life, which is Chokhmah and Binah. We also explain that this uh, first triangle, or Trinity, as Christianity calls Holy Trinity, emanates from the Ein Sof. And the Ein Sof is in itself the source of these uh, three primary forces. But there is a ray, there is a light that emanates from the Ein Sof that uh, brings into uh, existence these three primary forces. And that ray is what we call the Ains of Or. Aleph, Bav, Reish uh, is A-U-R in English, which in Hebrew is Or. That means light. So as you see, we are, of course, uh, relating the light to the consciousness. There is a first type of consciousness within that ray that is called Yehida. Yehida is a Hebrew word that means principle, singular. In itself, of course, since, as we said, each of us have our own individual Ein Sof in the depth of our own consciousness. We always say that. And it's because there is a ray that connects the consciousness to that Ein Sof. So in the depth of that ray, that singular force called Yehideh is the Ein Sof. So the Ein Sof in itself, of course, is that which is a reality. And the light that emanates from it is a type of consciousness, or we will say it is within which we find that intelligence, that consciousness, that is called Yehida, which is related to the will of uh, the Ein Sof. That will of the Ein Sof, of course, is creation. And that's why we have stated in other lectures that with the ends of or, which is the third aspects, third aspect of the unknowable, we find a universe, a cosmos, which is beyond this universe that we know, related with a type of immortal matter, related, of course, with the solar absolute. So the intelligence the consciousness of that uh, first cosmos is within Yehida. But Yehida extends into the three primary forces of the first triangle. And that's why we state that the letter Yod of the holy name yod he vav He, the letter Yod relates also 
to the consciousness or soul of Yehira, which is the will of the absolute. So, Arikampin, which is the first parsuf, what we named it in the previous lecture, contains within himself that Yehida, which of course extends to the other two aspects of Arikampin, which are Chochma and Binah. In Christian terms, we will say that Yehida, or divine will, is within Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and within the Ein Sof, which is that part of that divinity which we call Siti, which is the part that Moses says you cannot make any image of it because relates to the abstract, absolute space. So this is how we have to comprehend and understand that that intelligence, Yehida, in uh, Buddhist terms, divides in those three aspects that always we name and that we repeat the Dharmakaya, Sambhogakaya, and uh, Nirmanakaya. Being, of course, the one called Adikaya, which is the light with the ends of. Those three, uh, or those bodies, the three bodies, the three Kayas plus the Adikaya, is what we can uh, relate to the holy name of God, Yod He Bav He, that we always said is related to the world of Atziluth. So this Yehida, of course, as you can observe, is the consciousness of the Logos, of the Word. That's the wheel that we can call the Cosmic Christ. So within that consciousness of Yehida, or soul of Yehida, we find different uh, individuals that have reached that high of uh, cognizance <coughs> that of course are named in different religions that we have studied here. Uh, Arikampin itself, which is the manifestation of that Yehida, because we can say there are two parts here. The unmanifested part of that Yehida that corresponds to the ends of or, and the manifested part, which is the Holy Trinity, the first triangle of the tree of life. So within those elements of Sephiroth is where we find that will within. But when they express that creation, because the will of that Ein Sof is to create. That is his will. To manifest his creation, manifest his, his attributes in the universe. Through, through creation. In order to do it, there is an aspect that we study, or the, the seven uh, name of God that we study in the world of Atziluth that you can study and separate. We are not going to repeat here in order not to make too much confusion. We are going to take only one part, which is the holy name of God and the Sephira Yesod in the world of Atziluth. As we stated, these five souls manifest in all the seven cosmoses. And this cosmos called Atziluth, the name of God in Yesod, the ninth Sephira, is Shaddai El Hai, the Almighty Life, we will say, of God. Because Hai means life. 
And as you see and you observe, the second soul or consciousness or intelligence that we are uh, pointing now is that that we call Haya. Haya or Hai means life. Of course, within the second part, Haya, we find that Arikamping, that form, that entity, which has no form, but uh, that uh, has within the Yehida. So we will say that Yehida is the will that expresses to Haya. You want to uh, uh, comprehend more this aspect, we would say that Haya is yet that Arikamping that uh, with our imagination we are given form, but has no form. So that Haya expresses the will, and that's why that Haya is life. And that Haya expresses his will through the third aspect of this Arikamping, which is Bina. Remember that we say that the Arikamping is Keter, Chokmah, Bina, and the Ein Sof. So the one that is going to express that will to create is Haya. And that's why I pointed Yesod, because Bina expresses his power through the sexual power called Harai, Shadai El Hai in the world of Atsiluth. So that Sharai el Chai expresses itself through the Sephira Da'at, which is in the middle. In other words, if you remember, uh, if you read the P.C. Sophia, in that book, Master Jesus always stuck about the three spaces. The first space, the second space, and the third space. People wonder, what are those three spaces? Well, the three cosmoses. Atziluth, Bria, and Yatsirah. The world of splendor, Atziluth, or, or archetypes. Bria is the world of creation. And Yatsirah, the world of formation. So when we reach about now to the world of Da'at, the Sephira Da'at, we are entering into the world of Bria, the world of creation, which in the P.C. Sophia, Master Jesus called the second space, the second cosmos, or the second Olam, we will say in Kabbalah. Master Abramento, exactly. We have to emphasize here but when we said Master Jesus, we are naming, of course, his inner being, which is the Master Averamento. Master Averamento is the one that states that in Pisti Sophia, about the three spaces. So then, when we talk about the second space, Master Jesus says, the middle, the middle, in the middle. When we said in the middle, of course, we go to the column of the middle. And what we find there is the Sephira Da'at that descends from the first triangle. So Da'at is precisely the place with Haya, that soul that we are talking here, which is the second aspect, <coughs> acts. So that Haya, of course, expresses the world of Arziluth, which is symbolized by the letter Yod. In Kabbalah we say that Bria, the second space, expresses itself with the letter He, of the holy name. So it is not a mistake to say that in that we find Yod, He, the two forces, Arziluth and Bria together. Because remember that through Bina is how God divides itself into two, into that duality that we were talking in the previous lecture, or the Parsufim, in which we find two faces, one masculine and the other feminine. And that in many religions are named in different ways. 
in Egyptian terms, we call those two phases Osiris Isis. So Osiris Isis are the two forces that make Haya, that relate to Shadai el Hai. Because remember that here we are talking about the will of God, which is creation. And his power, his creative power, is the sexual energy. That is always related to the Sephira Yesod. Because the power of Bina expresses us in the Sephira Yesod as Shadai el Chai. From this point of view is why we always emphasize that the Sephira Da'at, where we find these two parsufim, these two phases, Ava and Aima, are in themselves the two forces of Haya, or the two parts of that aspect of God, which is Haya, that personify the power of Yehida. So this is how you have to visualize that these two souls, called Yehida and Haya, belong to God, to the Logos, are within God. Yehida is his will, and Haya is his life. That is, this is why in the Bible you find Jesus that expresses that, uh, those powers in himself, that Christ within Jesus says, I am the life, I am the light. In this way, he is referring to the light of Yehida and Haya, which is life. But remember that the Master Samael on the Or tell us very clear that each one of us has his own particular ray. Yehida, in other words, which means singular ray, singular light, that unite us to the ends of, to the absolute. So in the depth of our consciousness, we have that Yehida. That Christ, in other words, that light, and that life. Because remember that the Holy Trinity unfolds into the duality in a world of creation, masculine and feminine, called Haya. So we have our own particular life. And I repeat, this is why Moses stated in one of his commandments, you shall honor father and mother. Because father and mother is the unfoldment of that Arikampin, which is related with Yehida. In this way, it is easy to understand that when Yehida, which is the Holy Spirit, manifested to Abba and Aima, father and mother, blow their power, when they blow their power, is that that we call the Ruach. The Ruach itself is the wind, the blow. But in the Bible, or in Hebrew, in Kabbalah, we utilize the word Ruach for breath, Neshama for breath, and Nefesh for breath. So there's always a mis uh, misunderstanding here, because if you don't know really these words and how to apply them, you don't know how to read. Of course, the breath of God is Neshama. And that's precisely what we have to understand. When God blows Yehida through his high out, his entity, Neshama comes to be. So Neshama contains in itself Yehida. But Neshama is the will, the blow of Haya. You got it? Because the absolute, the light of the Ain Sof 
manifest is the ray of creation. Manifest in all the sephiroth, even to hell, to Klippoth, because that's precisely the descension of the ray of creation. So we have to understand that. Now how that will, Yehida, enters into the womb of Neshama when Haya blows that Ruach. But when I said this Ruach, of course, remember that Moses talked in the book of Genesis that the Ruach Elohim was floating upon the face of the waters. So here, of course, we have to understand that when we name Ruach, which is the fourth soul, is related to many aspects. Because Ruach is blowing, is wind, is a spirit as well. So that, uh, we will say, that effort, that will that you do in order to do something, is Ruach. Because remember that, taking the example of our physical body, <coughs> we have in our lungs, inside our lungs, that Haya, or we will say in other words, that Yehida. We are, physically speaking, the symbol of Haya, the life. But in the lungs we have Yehida. But when we do the effort to blow the air out of our lungs, behold the Ruach. That's the Ruach. Hmm? And when the Ruach go out, then turns into Neshama. That's putting an example of the body in relation with Arikan Ping of God. So the effort, the will of blowing through the tubes of our lungs and then ending into the nose is what we call the Ruach or the process of doing it. Hmm? The process of blowing. That's the Ruach, the spirit, which is an activity. Of course, the Neshama itself is that spiritual soul that each one of us has in the depth of the consciousness. And beyond, of course, we have Haya and, and Yehida. But remember that in the previous lecture, we have stated that that Neshama, that breath of God, is implanted within our own particular monad. And this is something that we have to understand, because Neshama in itself is that soul that receives the inheritance of our own particular Elohim. Remember that we stated, when we are explaining, or I mean, what we stated, what we explained in relation with Yehida and Haya, which is the will of the Absolute, and the Holy Spirit, that is in relation with those monads that are already self-realized, that already developed those type of souls. The new monads that emerge into the universe, they are the type of monads that need to develop that. And that's why the activity of Neshama, which is the, the breath of God, within each one of the monads that are being created, or that have to express their capabilities in the universe. And that uh, Neshama is precisely related with what is written in the book of Genesis as the Ruach Elohim. The Ruach Elohim that we said is our own innermost. The innermost itself is a uh, form by two sephirot that we always point here in the tree of life which are beneath that 
which is Hesed and Gebura. Hesed means mercy, and Gebura means justice or severity. So these two Sephiroth, Hesed and Gebura, are the we call statrum, the foundation of this soul that we call Neshama, within which we find the Ruach, that is also the will of God going into Neshama. That's why Moses called that the Ruach Elohim, the spirit of the Elohim within every monad. It is a neshama. Ruach, because Ruach unfolds, the divine Ruach unfolds into that in order to originate the universe. So, of course, these two superior parts, Ruach and neshama, are there up in the higher dimensions. And we always said that Neshama is the divine soul and the Ruach is the spirit related to that Neshama that came from the mouth of God or of the Elohim. We always explain that <coughs> part of that Neshama, part of that breath of God or of the Elohim descends into matter. In order to develop all the attributes of those consciousness of souls that each one of us has within. In order to accomplish what Master Jesus says, in patience you will possess your souls. Because it's a matter of working within and not without. So that part of that Neshama is what in Zen Buddhism is called Buddhata. Part of Buddha. In this case, we will say that this Neshama or Ruach Elohim is a Buddha itself. That breath of God that can give us enlightenment if we develop it. So that part of Neshama is, of course, within it, the intelligence. And that's precisely the part that we call the Ruach. The Ruach, or intelligence, or the thinking soul, that has the possibility of developing the Neshama within. And that's why, in many uh, books of Kabbalah, they associate that part of Neshama with Tifereth, which is a human soul. But of course, that part of Neshama is the one that descends into matter. But remember, that is connected, that part of Neshama, that embryo of soul, enters into matter, but is connected to the spiritual soul, which is the breath of God there in the higher dimensions, and to Haya, which is the father and mother, that Moses says, honor father and mother, and to Yehida, which is that particular ray that unites us to the ends of. So, in the last synthesis, we will say that our own particular consciousness is united directly to all the souls internally. That, of course, not all of us are conscious of that. Not all of us are cognizant of that. So, when, the, when that part of Neshama descends, as you know, to exercise or to develop the, uh, itself into what we call evolution, in the evolution, in the will of Samsara, you know that that part of Neshama, which is a consciousness, enters. The Buddha enters 
into the mineral kingdom and start developing what it has to develop in order to acquire cognizance from the very lower levels up to the higher levels. And this is how that uh, Neshama starts with the influence of the Cosmo creators and the superior forces developing that that we call Nefesh. That is the very lower part of the soul. Nefesh in itself is the life of the matter, is that life that expresses uh, in the physical world or in any matter. Is that mechanical life that uh, we perceive through the senses and that multiplies and that is submitted to death is not immortal. You have to grasp this because sometimes we name nefesh because nefesh means soul in, the, in, in other ways. But here we are specifying this in relation with the lunar bodies. Master Samael on Veor explains very clear in the book of Tarot and Kabbalah that nefesh is that lower animal part that we have related with the lunar bodies. The lunar bodies are, of course, uh, created through the power of Haya. Remember that Haya, the power of the Holy Spirit, is the one that creates Nefesh in different levels. In this way, mechanically, in the will of Samsara, in evolution, that Haya creates according to karma, according to mechanicity, the protoplasmic bodies that will become the vesture for that embryo of soul or that part of Neshama that evolves, start evolving in the mineral kingdom. And that is what we call Nefesh. Because that Nefesh is contained in those protoplasmic bodies. But mechanically evolves to the plant kingdom, through the animal kingdom, finally reaching the level of humanoid, as we know. But that's mechanical. And uh, from that Nefesh, evolves another type of Ruach. But it's not the Ruach that I mentioned in the beginning, the superior breath or will or effort of God in order to create Neshama. This Ruach is another emanation from the evolution or the manifested uh, life from Haya into Nefesh, which is, of course, that we call mind and emotion. So Ruach, as mind, as feelings, developed from the very bottom of the mineral kingdom and reached the top of evolution in the humanoid that receives intellect. But of course, this is a mechanical Ruach, which is related with the protoplasmic bodies, with the protoplasmic matter, which is always submitted to death. That's why in many uh, religions, when they uh, talk about the death of the soul, they are talking or rela uh, relating this statement to Nefesh and Ruach that evolve mechanically in the protoplasmic bodies. Because if you observe the protoplasmic lunar bodies, of any animal, of any plant, of any mineral, you find their mind, intelligence, but mechanical, related with the exterior world, related with the mechanical forces of nature. 
And you find now, for instance, this humanity that we call humanity, which is formed by individuals that rotate around their nefesh, their intellect or their ruach, and their feelings, which is also the ruach. Because ruach is in relation with feelings and intellect. While the nefesh is the very foundation of that development, which is a sexual force, or the life of the body. That nefesh, nefesh is uh, in the blood of our physical organism, in the vitality of our physical organism. That nefesh influences even the development of the personality. In previous lectures, we have stated that that nefesh force, or the protoplasmic force of Ruach as well, is uh, felt in the liver. It comes from ancient past. It's related with what we call the infraconsciousness and the subconsciousness of nature, which influence our present, our present unconsciousness, or the way in which we behave mechanically. So there you have <coughs> that the personality and the lunar protoplasmic bodies that we have within, which are related with the ego, are related with that that we call nefesh and ruach, the mechanical ones. In this case, we will say that there are two types of nefesh, lower nefesh and upper nefesh, lower ruach and upper ruach. We already talked about the upper Ruach. And we are talking now about the lower Nefesh. But let me start talking about the superior Nefesh. Or upper Nefesh. That is precisely the one that we Gnostics are interested in. Because remember that we have to transform. We have to possess those souls. As Master Jesus says. In your patience, you will possess your souls. But we have to begin in the, with the very bottom, very lower part of the soul, which is Nefesh. We know that unfortunately, the essence, the Buddha, the part of Neshama that descends in order to learn into the matter, is bottled, trapped within the protoplasmic bodies, within the lunar bodies, within nefesh and ruach, in other words, mechanical nefesh and ruach. So then, that soul is that will, that neshama, that had to exercise will into nefesh and ruach, mechanical, in order to transform them. And that's, and that's a process of will inside of each one of us. That's why we always state, the people that think, by thy following that soul, nefesh and ruach, which are mechanical, which are lower, they think that will attain immortality or salvation, they are wrong. Because they are, they are related to the protoplasmic bodies. The only way to take advantage of these two souls is by purifying them and extracting from them the experience that they had from the mineral, plant, animal kingdom, and even human kingdom. How do we do that? In many lectures we explain that we need to receive the bread of God. That bread of God, in other lectures we said, is the Eucharist. But there are many exercises, many practices, many ways in which the Ruach, the superior Ruach, the breath of God that penetrates into the nostrils, purifies the blood. And that blood, which is purified, creates a new type of nefesh. 
a new type of life in our body, a new type of thinking, a new type of feeling. But of course, that's why masters of the white lodge, great illuminates, illuminated ones, they said that we have to learn how to breathe light. And that is, this is why it is good to read and meditate in the Bible, in the Quran, in the Bhagavad Gita, and all the sacred books. Because they are written with light, with ruach, with life, haya. That, of course, is the way in which we feed the blood. Because remember and don't forget that the blood is a vehicle of nefesh, of that life that influences our personality and our mind. So when we do that and follow the instructions <coughs> of the great avatars that teach us how to transform the nefesh whose foundation and base is exactly in the sexual organs, because that's nefesh is precisely in yesod. From yesod is how the nefesh multiplies. But the nefesh behemot, we don't care about it. Behemot, of course, you know, is the beast, the animals. That nefesh behemot is very popular uh, in, this day, in this day and age, in this uh, humanity. The bestial soul related with the mechanicity of nature. What we want to create or to develop is that nefesh Eloki is called in, in Kabbalah, Eloki, which means Nefesh, which is wholly related with God. And many traditions, they teach you even how to eat in order to feed that Nefesh in the best way. We, give, we already gave many lectures related to how to eat, what to put in our mouth, etc., in order to purify that blood, in order to create better mm -hmm. elements in that nefesh with that when we transmute it originates of course the ruach that we want to develop that ruach is that intelligence that the through the, the that through the ruach elohim will be cre uh, will be created inside of us Remember that the Haya, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of Ava and Aima work through the sexual act. And that's why we not teach the Saha Maituna, the sexual magic. Because it's through the sexual magic how that Nefesh will improve. And we will leave the Nefesh Behemot and enter into the Nefesh Aloki which is the superior nefesh, even the superior sperm that we will purify and clean little by little with the practices and exercises in which we influence the consciousness. Because we're talking here about the consciousness. But remember that the lower of all of them is that consciousness related with the physical body, which is nefesh. That unfortunately, is very strong. The nefesh behemot. Because that nefesh behemot goes around sex, the animal sex, bestiality, and influence and develops that psychology or that intelligence, ruach, in the humanoid related with that degeneration. That's why you find two types of ruach or intelligences, because when you call it ruach, it's in relation with the mind, with the intelligence in the physical body, in the brain, in other words. You find that intelligence or ruach, soul, we will say, it, which comes from nefesh behemot, which explain and justify the behemot psychology or the animal uh, behavior, or the mechanicity of nature, the evolution, they said, and the evolution. 
And that's why in this day and age you find a lot of books, a lot of literature in which they justify homosexuality, lesbianism, prostitution, bestiality, and many other degenerations that are related to nefesh behemoth, the mechanicity of nature, which will take them, of course, to the devolution. Because nefesh behemoth and ruach behemoth, which is the intelligence of the animal, have a beginning and an ending. Is in Klipoth. The second death is what we call the second death. But with the Gnostics, we want to create another type of flesh. When we said flesh, we're talking about nefesh. Another type of intelligence. When we said intelligence, we're talking about ruach. So by creating a higher nefesh and a higher ruach, we are transforming ourselves into different individuals. And that's precisely from the point of Kabbalah, the real step when you enter into any religion. People think that that transformation comes just by believing. You are not going to transform your nefesh in your physical body by believing. Because beliefs relate to the Ruach Behemoth. But experience Conscious experience relates to the superior ruach in your body. Because remember that when we talk about the three brains, when we emphasize always the lectures in the three brains, nefesh is in relation with the instinctual motor sexual brain. And ruach is related with the emotional and intellectual brain. Because these are the three brains through which these protoplasmic bodies express themselves. And the Neshama, the part of the spiritual soul that we have incarnated, that embryo of soul, is related with the pineal gland. That's why, that's why the card stated that the pineal gland is the seat of the soul. What soul? No nefesh, no ruach, but that embryo of soul, part of neshama. So from the pineal gland is how you exercise control of your nefesh and ruach. And how you transform yourself into a higher level. Beliefs are necessary in the beginning because you receive the knowledge. But you have to study and practice it. Because in order to create the superior nefesh and the superior ruach, which we, call, we will call nefesh and ruach Eloki. Remember with Elohim. Godly ones. <coughs> we have to be, of course, uh, practicing you know a transformation in the physical body for instance when you sit down and meditate that is a transformation because with med through meditation is how the pineal gland works only through meditation is how that embryo of soul in the pineal gland will open the doors and will bring the superior forces of Haya and Yehida, which will influence that Neshama in order to transform a Ruach and Nefesh. That process is precisely what Master Jesus called to be born again. Because we have to study the doctrine. It's not a matter of believing the doctrine. You have to study the doctrine which is written in the Gospels, in the Bible, in all the books. But then when you comprehend the path, then you apply it in your consciousness, in your nefesh, in your ruach. 
and transform that into a human being. That's the process. That's why knowing that the nefesh and ruach, mechanical ones, that are given unto us through the protoplasmic bodies as a gift, eventually will take us to the devolution into Klipoth if we don't create new bodies. Those new bodies, of course, are related with Nefesh and Ruach. Because remember that the eventual creation of those solar entities within come from the sexual force. And that sexual force is Nefesh. That's why in the beginning, Master uh, Ilarion, whose name was Paul of Tarsus, states, first is the animal, then the spiritual. It is not possible to demand from an animal to behave like spiritual in the beginning. Because anybody that enters into the path and realizes that if he, if he doesn't create the internal bodies or the internal soul, he eventually will descend with Nefesh and Ruach, the mechanical ones, into hell through the second death. In the beginning, when he starts practicing, transmuting the sexual force, is an animal. is a nefesh behemoth doing it, learning how to do it. Many students complain because it is difficult to transform that nefesh behemoth in one week, or in one month, or in one year. It's not easy. The nefesh behemoth is accustomed to fornication. The Ruach, which is the outcome of that Nefesh Behemoth, is uh, accustomed to think in a very superficial way, related with the five senses, with the exterior world. Only those that develop the interior Ruach, with exercises and practices, develop the inner sight that opens their inner eyes, spiritual eyes, and see that there is other, other things beyond this physical world. And then so they developed a different Ruach. But of course, instead of uh, that lunar animal desire vehicle <coughs> that we have, in which in Sanskrit the theosophy is called Kamarupa, or body of desires, instead of having that nefesh, we have to create the solar astral body. So the solar astral body inside is another type of soul. That's why the Master Samael on Veor in his books emphasize that we have to create soul because we don't have soul. When he says that we don't have soul, he is referring to human soul. But we have Nefesh and Ruach, of course, and an embryo of Neshama. But that embryo of Neshama had to grow through the protoplasmic bodies, which are made of the, I mean, for the solar bodies, no protoplasmic, the solar, which are made of the same substance, the same uh, elements of the soul. And this is how we start developing and acquiring cognizance. Because when we create a body, a solar astral body, we, of course, are overcoming the counterpart which is the Kamarupa, the Nefesh, the Nefesh Behemot. And when we create, listen carefully now, the inferior manas and the superior manas, which are above that astral body, in theosophy they call it inferior and superior manas. Manas is mind. This is in relation with Ruach. So then, we are creating the, the Ruach in the mind, in the level of the mind, and the Ruach in the level of Tifereth. When we have these three bodies, and then we said we created soul. And that's why in Kabbalah, they call Tifereth the Ruach. But the superior Ruach, or the abstract way of thinking. This is how we 
get out from the mechanicity of Nefesh Behemoth and Ruach Behemoth that eventually will sink into Klipoth and be disintegrated. Many people, many religious people, different religious, different sects that study esotericism, they uh, state that the consciousness can awake or that can awake or to acquire all the elements of Yehira, Haya, and Neshama in the protoplasmic bodies. And uh, uh, we are uh, sorry to dissent with their type of thinking, but if that was the case, then Neshama at least will be in the bodies of all this humanity. But the only part that we have is an embryo of soul, which unfortunately is trapped into the lunar bodies. Of course, we don't deny it. there are individuals that awake that nefesh and that ruach, behemoth, and become inhabitants of Klipoth, but not of the superior forces. Because this Nefesh and Ruach, lower Ruach and, Behe, and uh, the Behemoth, is related with a law of return and reoccurrence, <coughs> in which eventually uh, the karma, of course, manifests very severe and severe. Because karma, the law of cause and consequence, manifests to that nefesh and ruach in every life. We will say that in every life, we uh, have different type of nefesh and ruach according to the karma that we bring from the past and according to the behavior that we have in present lives. But that is called return and reoccurrence. The only way to relate our consciousness with the law of reincarnation is by bringing down the neshama into our bodies. And that is precisely the goal of Gnosis. To create the internal solar bodies in order to bring, to incarnate the neshama inside of us. In order for us to have that breath of life that is written in the book of Genesis. Remember that if you read the book of Genesis in Hebrew, you read, you read very clear there that it is stated that God made of the dust of the earth the human being and blow in his nostrils the neshama of life. The neshama of life. Because that neshama is the outcome of haya. So that haya is blown by him into that creature. But that creature has to be created from the dust of the earth. And that's a process. It's not a matter of believing, as many people think. Because many religious people think in this day and age that the human being that is referred in the book of Genesis is a present humanity. But it is uh, sad to state it, but the truth is that present humanity is not the human being referred in the book of Genesis. This is just an efesh behemoth, a bestial entity that has the shape of a human being, that behave like a beast, and that like will die like a beast in this physical world and in the internal world, in Klippoth. So the process of incarnating the Neshama, the spiritual soul, in the body, is a very painful process shown in the Gospels with his very life of uh, Master Jesus of Nazareth. 
the process in which the nefesh, his own nefesh, behemoth, and ruach behemoth, appears there as an enemy that he has to overcome. And the process in which through the cross he's doing it. You know, all the demons, devils that are mentioned in the Gospels relate to Nefesh Behemoth and the Ruach Behemoth that devolve in the humanoid kingdom into very horrible entities. <coughs> so, of course, when somebody starts doing uh, this uh, work of conscious transformation, this is how the true human being appears on the earth. Remember, and I repeat now, that uh, we stated in many lectures, that human is precisely that statement that means Hume, the spirit, in the mind. But this mind is superior Ruach, the solar bodies that we have to create. And uh, in order to incarnate Neshama, we have to annihilate, we have to disintegrate the protoplasmic bodies, the animality in us, that Ruach and Nefesh that relate to the mechanicity have to be disintegrated. After, of course, we, after we create the solar superior bodies, after we are being born again, in other words. Many uh, disciples of the White Lodge disintegrate egos, but they cannot disintegrate the solar bodies, I mean the lunar bodies, if previously they don't create the solar bodies. Because Neshama needs a vehicle in order to exist. In the protoplasmic bodies are precisely the vessel that nature gives us in order for us to exist in this physical world and in the internal worlds. That vessel is what the black Kabbalist, what the black magicians developed, which is a lunar mechanical protoplasmic vessel that eventually go to Klippoth. And that's why we always state that they have power in Klippoth, and that they receive the forces of Klippoth, and they awake their consciousness related with Nefesh, Behemoth, and Ruach Behemoth. But they never develop the superior forces. Because for that they need to be in chastity and following the path of White Tantra. So, as we stated in other lectures, there are two forces. The Kunda Buffer and the Kundalini. The Kunda Buffer is the power of Haya in Klippoth. And the Kundalini is the power of Haya in the superior tree of life. That's why, remember this, in the, the Bible is stated Otz Chaim. This Hebrew word Otz Chaim means the tree of lives. Because the I am at the end of the word is plural. Chaim means lives. But it's always translated as life. Because in reality, that tree of life encloses many lives. But it's Oz Chaim, the tree of lives, that relate, of course, to all the souls that we are naming here. The souls that are condemned to the second death, that go into Klippot, are the Ruach and Nefesh Behemoth related with the mechanicity. They go down into the inferior dimensions. But if we be, uh, be born again and create a new Nefesh, a new Ruach within, then we incarnate Neshama and enter into the realm of the human being. And the human being, which as is written, is made into the image of God. That image of God, of course, is within Neshama. 
that expresses in different levels in the physical body. But we have to develop that. When we reach that uh, different uh, levels of neshama, is where we enter into the world of Yetzirah. The world of Yetzirah, which is the third space, talking in, in Pisces Sophia, is a world of formation in which Neshama is being developed according to the nine heavens. But in order to enter into that Yetzirah, we have to be first inhabitants of Asia in the human level. And for that, we need to create the solar bodies, astral, mental, and causal bodies inside, and to annihilate the egos or animal, or animal entities that personify our own uh, nefesh behemoth in this uh, physical world. I hope you are grasping what I am saying. I'm repeating and repeating in order to go into your consciousness and to explain. Because we are listening. But you have to put in activity your neshama and your pineal gland. Which is the only part that came from heaven. Remember that it is stated by Master Jesus to Nicodemus. And no one went up to heaven, but only the Son of Man that came down from heaven. And that is a statement related, directly related to the Nefesh Behemoth and to the Ruach Behemoth, which are related with the mechanicity of nature. Those protoplasmic bodies, lunar bodies, cannot go up to heaven because they didn't come down from heaven. The only part that came down from heaven was the, the Budata, the part of Neshama, which in the process of initiation becomes the son of man. Why I just call the son of man? Because this is the child of our own secretions. When we create the astral body, the mental body, the causal body, when we reach Tifereth, the causal body, Behold there all the son of men, all the child of our own efforts, of our own actions, transmutation, chastity. Because if we follow the same uh, sexual attitude of behemoth, the beasts of the earth, we will create only physical bodies. But never the psychological man or the cosmos human, as we explain in other lectures. Only at that level of Neshama is how we can enter into the level of Haya. The level of Haya is related with Bria and is only uh, possible to enter and grasp that Haya when the individual resurrects, when entering into resurrection. You see, that resurrection is a process of transformation. Remember that I told you that Haya is related with Ava and Aima, father, mother. In other words, with the Holy Spirit and the Divine Mother Kundalini. When the individual finishes the absorption, the total development of Neshama in the world of Yetzirah, the world of formation, the third space of Pisces Sophia, then that individual is swallowed. Listen carefully. It's swallowed by Haya. Because Nefesh, Ruach, and Neshama are exterior to God. But Haya and Yehida are interior to God. We are reverse. Neshama, Ruach, and Nefesh are interior of us. But Haya and Yehida are outside of us. Because that, th those two souls belong to God. So when somebody reaches perfection in Neshama, inside, because it's a psychological work, perfection, 
then you are perfect as your father who is in heaven is perfect. Then Haya swallows you. The swallowing is little by little, step by step, body after body. We have seven bodies. Physical body, vital body, astral body, mental body, causal body, beautiful body, spiritual body. Those seven bodies, which are represented by the seven lower sephiroth, had to be swallowed by Bina. The first one that swallows that is the Divine Mother. That is represented by a serpent. In other words, the serpent, the Divine Viper, Kundalini, the serpent that healed the Israelites in the wilderness has to swallow the children of Israel because they are purified completely in Neshama. When that serpent swallowed all of that seven sephiroth and then Haya, Azari Kampin, the Holy Spirit, Bina, swallows the serpent. The swallowing of the serpent is very painful because the individual in itself, who is Neshama, purified, is transformed little by little into a serpent. That is what in Hinduism is called Naga. When somebody comes a Naga, a serpent, meaning that is completely purified, that is already swallowed by Haya in the feminine aspect. And the last process is resurrection. Because then the eagle, which is the Holy Spirit, swallows the serpent. And that's a very painful process. Represented, of course, in that symbol in which the eagle is swallowing the serpent. Which is uh, one of the symbols in the, in the sign of the flag of Mexico. Which is, uh, of course, the eagle is standing in, in a cactus and with the other is taking the serpent. That's a symbol of that. Resurrection. As you know, uh, you read the Gospels, the process of death in the cross and resurrection is very painful. You have to descend into hell and do a lot of work and finally resurrect and become a living soul. You see, this is what the Bible calls a nefesh haya. Nefesh haya. Before here, the word nefesh. But it's a superior nefesh. It's not a mechanical behemoth. It's a nefesh haya related with the Holy Spirit there, vibrating in another dimension. And as a nefesh haya, then is this individual enters into the perfection of the other three bodies or trikayas of Buddhism which are related with Yehida, which belong to the first space. In other words, we will say that a resurrected master entered into the second space, which is Bria. And in order to perfect the other bodies and to enter into Yehida, he has to perfect the three bodies of glory. That's why it's called bodies of glory. Because his type of soul very high. And they way enter into the world of Chokmah, into the world of Keter, and going back into the Ein Sof. Only those that perfect those souls of Yehida enter into the Ein Sof. A kind of development beyond the human level. Jesus of Nazareth, the master of Veramento, did it. The Buddha Gautama Sakyamuni reached that perfection of Yehida. Mohammed did it. Krishna did it. But those are not called humans. They're called superhumans, supermen. They're very high. And there are other individuals, sacred individuals, that are trying to reach those perfections in order to enter into the higher levels. But as you see, when you enter into the superior souls, Yehida and Haya, you are inside God, inside the consciousness of God, inside of the intelligence of the cosmos. 
which is far from our uh, comprehension. That's why they become one with God. To become one with God, you have to penetrate in Haya and Yehira, in the different levels. And when you reach the higher level, then you can enter into the Absolute. Returning to the Ain. That Ain Sof penetrates into the Ain and becomes, of course, a Para Marta Satya. That's a term beyond Yehira. You need to acquire all the levels of Yehida in order to enter into the level of Paramartha Satya, which is the goal. That's the goal. But behold where we are. Very low. Let me now to read something to finish so you can ask questions. Which is written in the Pisti Sophia. It says... Chapter 101, I believe. I didn't copy the, the chapter, but it's related with this. Of the dignity of those who have received the mysteries. What mysteries? The mysteries are all those arcana or arcana that we had to develop in relation with the five souls. In each level, you are developing and knowing, having cognizance of all the mysteries of the universe. Because those souls are related with the Sephiroth in different aspects. So that's why Master Aviramento, Jesus says, of the dignity of those who have received the mysteries. He said, Now therefore, blessed is he who hath found the words of the mysteries of the first space, which is from without. Yehira. That's the first space where of Atsilus. Without means that it's not inside of you, it's outside of you. And he is a God who has found these words of the mysteries of the second space. The second space is Haya, Imbria. So, in other words, the ones that are swallowed by the serpent and by the eagle, which is the Holy Spirit, the ones that are resurrecting, are as gods in the second space, which is in the mist, you see? The second space, which is in the mist, which means that that is in the mist of the tree of life. And he is a savior. And uncontainable who hath found the words of the mysteries of the third space. In other words, the one that have accomplished all of the work of Neshama in the world of Yetzirah and developed all the Neshama is a savior because Christ can use this individual as an avatar, as a messenger in order to help any humanity in the universe. The mysteries here, carefully he says, the words of the mysteries of the third space, which is within. You see? It's Neshama, because it's the only part of the soul which is within. The other is without, Haya and Yehida. And he is more excellent than the universe, and like unto those who are in that third space. Those who are in the third space, Nirvana, are the gods. Because he hath found the mystery in which they are and in which they stand. Each one of them. You perfect it, you know which God is in this level and which another God is another level in that world of Yetzirah. For this cause, therefore, is he like unto them. He, on the other hand, who hath found the words of the mysteries which I have described unto you according to a likeness, that they are the limbs of the ineffable. Amen, I said unto you. That man who hath found the words of these mysteries in divine truth is the first in truth and like unto him, the ineffable. 
For through those worlds and mysteries and the universe itself stands through that first. For this cause, he who hath found the words of those mysteries is like unto the first, for it is the gnosis of all gnosis, of the ineffable, concerning which I have discoursed with you this day. Well, we will say that this is concerning which, which I have talked to you this day. Do you have questions? He's talking about, this is talking about the ray that emanates from the ends of how are the zodiacal signs related with that? <clears throat> well, the zodiacal sign or the zodiac is in relation with Chokhmah, the world of Atsilus. We will say that the zodiac influences every uh, soul according to his own ray. Because if you see that Chokhmah belongs the ray of Yehida. Obviously, that Haya will blow into that monad according to the vibration of that particular ray that belongs to the monad. There are seven rays. But those seven rays, of course, relate also to the 12 zodiacal signs, the 12 tribes of Israel. Because this is how that, that you know, the part of that. Uh, Intelligent descends into Malkut, into the world of matter. In the 12th tribe of Israel, the 12 zodiacal signs, we have the mysteries, the knowledge that we need in order to develop our own particular Yehida, or Ray, in other words. Remember that Jesus said that he has 12 apostles. Jesus represents the ray of Yehida and the 12 apostles, the 12 forces, 12 tribes that needs to be developed through the development, of course, of the souls that we are explaining here. This is why Master Jesus said, in your patience, you will possess your souls. That's the meaning of it. Beginning from the very bottom. Both in the Muslim, in the Islamic tradition and in Hindu, and actually in the Buddhist tradition, uh, all of them teach about the importance of learning about breath, mm -hmm. watching breath, and the mystery of breath. So, how can you relate the practice of neophytes and the practice of meditators in relation to breath and those three souls? Yeah. This, the question is, how do we relate uh, uh, the question about the breath in relation with the Shama, Ruach, and Efesh, which are really related, and both of them are always related with the word breath, right? They always say God is breath. And it says that God is breath, and it's true. God is breath. It's a Ruach, Elohim. But we, we have to understand that Yehida is also like a breath, the breath of the Absolute. Right? The first breath, the first word, light. And Haya is also a breath of life. That is in every individual. Because Haya means life. And from that word Haya, also you find the word Hayot, which is feminine. Which means creatures. Sometimes it's translated as beasts or animals. But really beasts is behemoth. So the breath, of course, that's why in Buddhism and in other uh, traditions, they teach how to concentrate in your breath, right? Because really, in your breath is how you uh, actually are become conscious, cognizant of that entity which is God, which is Haya, life, which is Nefesh, which is God, which is Ruach, which is God, which is Yehida. It depends how, what way of thinking or, or the level of your thinking and when you are doing that, you know. Mantras and all of that, that connect to the superior souls. Because you start swearing, then you bring the lower forces of Nefesh Behemoth from Klipoth into your body. It depends how you behave, right? 
That's why it is important to be conscious of that breath. But it's not just as people think, just to be conscious of how I breathe, right? I'm conscious of that breath. No, to be conscious of that breath means from the very bottom of your nefesh to the ruach, which is another breath, to neshama, which is another breath, to haya and yehida. That's to be conscious of that, to enter into those samadis or shamadis and those breaths. Because this is how the soul, which is part of that breath, connect in shamadis into the different worlds of the cosmos. To enter into Yehida is what we call Nidivikalpa Samadhi. To enter into the very essence of God inside God. And to experience a Samadhi in which you, 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 you experience a whole. That's the breath. That's also breath. And that's why they said that physically they stop breathing, but they are still breathing in the higher levels. And uh, of course, there's one thing very important to emphasize here. That if you stop breathing, you die. Because really God is, you know, you can stop talking, you can stop thinking. Eating, doing anything and survive. But if you stop breathing, you die. This is because the life really, the high of God enters through the oxygen, as we explain in many lectures. To breathe light, yeah. Matthew Samael explains, there are certain individuals that breathe light. Well, we will say, in other words, there are certain individuals that breathe Yehida. Master of Eramento is one of them. To breathe Yehida is to, is to be a like to God. You know? Or to breathe that Haya. But what type of soul are we breathing now? You see? The nefesh behemoth of this planet Earth has created pollution. And unfortunately, that is the type of breath that we enter into the, into the nostrils. That's where we are sick with many types of sicknesses in this day and age. Because we as humanoids are destroying this planet, unfortunately. And that's why we had to make uh, a, a lot of, uh, how do you call, uh, miracles in order to put into our body the good elements so we can have in the sexual organs a good nefesh for transmutation. We can go to the, to the forest, we can go to the sea, to the coast in order to, to find that prana, that energy that we need. Because unfortunately, we remain in these cities created by the ignorance of the nefesh behemoth of this planet. We breathe smog, we breathe alcohol, fumes, cigarettes, and all of that, unfortunately, venoms, poisons that uh, we created because this is what we are. Yeah, of course. All of this energy that uh, Behemoth, uh, Nefesh Behemoth has created, and Ruach Behemoth has created, and which is poison, is going to be utilized in Klipoth. And is going to go down there in order to give solid consistency to this planet, mechanically. But from heaven, from, from up, up there, in order to go up there is just waste, is garbage. What are you reading, or what, what is your oh, question? Yeah. You are reading <laughs> something? Yeah, yeah, this is something from our website. From our website. All right, uh, sorry, the person here is mentioning something that he read in the website, but he's not reading in the very way, so well, we, we don't, we don't understand, but uh, I mean... Aquarian era, when well, we entered into Aquarian era and society went into upheaval, the energy is being provided as assistance for humanity. 
you're talking about the Dionysian wave. Well, the energy that we talk here is the energy that comes from above, from Yehida and Haya, superior forces in Neshama. We're not talking about the superior forces that are created here in this planet. Because what we are creating here, unfortunately, is pollution. And that's poison. And that's why this planet is now in chaos. It's havoc everywhere. Why? Because the elements of nature wants to equilibrate themselves in all of this pollution in which we are. And that's why uh, the planet will pass to a transformation in order to annihilate the poison that we created. And of course, it will act according to karma. Very painful. Well, yeah, as we explained, you can use the energy, the force, if you know how to transform that in your body. This is how you have to do, to consciously know how to transform that in your body. And this is how why we are here, because we have to learn that. Remember that it's written that it is not what enters into your mouth, what hurts you, but what comes out. But this is my statement as well. We don't have to drink gasoline because of that statement. We have to be wise and know how to eat, what to breathe. That's why the Master gave many lectures in relation with what to eat and what not to eat, in order to be or not to be. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Amen.